highlight the headlines and we jump in here and pick them apart to examine all of the linguistic goodness that exists out there in the news so that you can expand your vocabulary, not just making do with the phrases that you already have, but to make the most of every opportunity to express yourself and not only accurately, but also colorfully. That having been said, Good morning, mushrooms, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers, sisters, mothers, misters, and all my cousins out there around the world. It's time to plug in and get this train a chugging. And when I say a beautiful news day, of course, the world is a sad, dark, terrible, horrible place. However, it's full of interesting language. And now they have set a police station on fire. Point being here, linguistically, to set something on fire, yeah? It means to light it up and make it burn. And why are they protesting? Why are they looting? Something that I alluded to two days after the death of an unarmed black man. Does that mean he had no arms? No, of course not. It means that he didn't have a gun or weapon. In the US especially, when we're talking about arms or arms deals, arms treaties, nuclear arms, etc., we're talking about guns and weapons in general. And he died at the hands of a police officer. He didn't die at the hands of a police officer, he died at the knee of a police officer. And not at the knees like he was begging for his life, but the police officer was actually literally kneeling on the neck of this poor unarmed man. See, you can tell I'm already getting upset and angry. Ah, Minneapolis police force, um, known for egregious violence and brutality towards minority populations. So this police officer, he was in, he's been involved in at least two police shoot, shootings by police officers in the past. I can't speak to whether or not they were justified. However, he had 18 prior complaints filed against him. Prior just means previous, before, yeah? And so before this incident, he's had 18 complaints filed against him because you take a complaint, a piece of paper, and you file it. You put it in his file, on his CV. It seems as though he's never had charges brought against him. Ooh, recycled vocabulary to bring char charges against somebody He's never been formally accused or gone to trial. However, now the mayor of Minneapolis, among other people, are pushing for him to be charged with murder. Let him burn. All right, and so the police, of course, say one thing. However, the video seems to contradict their claims that he resisted arrest. To resist something is to say no to it and try and stop it from happening. Just like some people can't resist junk food, and so they just keep eating it. They can't say no, they can't stop it from happening. Please say that he was resisting arrest and trying to stop it from happening and not be arrested. However, video contradicts it. So please say this, video says that, eyewitness testimony says that, and more about the tactics which killed this man. Knee to neck move, which was used on him, Ooh, so we've got a reduced relative clause and a reduced passive. The knee to neck move, which was used on him, is not endorsed by most police. Again, another reduced passive. And to endorse something is to publicly say, give your support and approval to it. Think about celebrity endorsements of products. My name is Kim Kardashian, and I think this is a delicious coffee. Yeah, and so they're officially celebrity endorsements, obviously paid, but they're giving their official support and approval of a product. And so here, most police are not approving of this technique. I'm not really Kim Kardashian. Tears up over this situation, the, this murder of an unarmed, unresisting individual. Now, in the past, we've had to choke back tears, to suppress your emotions, to try and push down those tears, to get choked up when you're watching something, and yeah, and it's like choking you up. <coughs> oh, that made me cough. Tear up as you're talking about it. Wow, that cough actually made me tear up. I don't know if you can see, my eyes look really watery right now. Getting away from Minneapolis and police brutality, China, is embracing a new brand of foreign policy. Remember, to embrace and embrace quite literally is a hug. Yeah, just like when you see old friends in the past, 
We used to embrace them. Now we can't anymore because of coronavirus and social distancing, but we can not only embrace things physically, but by embracing, say, a new style of foreign policy or even embracing an idea, it means accepting it and keeping it close to you. You could even say adopting. Boom! Recycled vocabulary from earlier this week. A new brand of foreign policy, a new style, and not brand just like, I've recently tried out a new brand of super glue, and I, Kim Kardashian, endorse this product. Yeah, because this one was actually much better than that one. Uh, that's beside the point. I am the best! So that other people hear you and you are stating that. However, in this case, claims also goes with territory. Like the conquistadors, when they came to the new world, they plant their flag and say, I claim this land for Spain. They're not just claiming the South China Sea is a beautiful piece of water. Um, no, they're saying it's ours. And the US is challenging that and they're saying, mm -mm -mm, hold on, slow your roll, son, stay in your lane. <laughs> But uh, yeah, well, things could get a little bit tricky. So many different waves in the news, waves of viruses, second waves, third waves, and now we've got a wave of hungry locusts. Oh, man, can't, can't the world just give these people a break? Or if you remember from past broadcasts, what is the word that we use for large groups of insects and the way they move, the way people were going to the beaches? Remember, to flock is for birds. Caca, caca, flocking to the beaches. We wouldn't say a flock of locusts, even though they fly, because they're insects. We would say a... Oh, you guys are slow this morning. A swarm. Swarm of hungry locusts. They are swarming the countryside, eating all the plants. Other disgusting news, this whole concept of honor killing. Um, some of your cultures need to get over it and move out of the Middle Ages, if not Stone Ages. Sparks, outrage. Yeah, those are the sparks. And fire is hot. That's anger. And so they're sparking, they're lighting the fire for outrage. Rage, anger. Outrage, expressed anger. We'll resume its season on June 17th. We had resumed the other day. It's to restart something that was stopped. And as you know, football has been suspended and now it will be restarting or the season will be resuming. North Korean bankers charged in a scheme. A scheme is a very elaborate plan to make something happen. Now, for us in the United States, a scheme is always something sort of negative, some sort of pl evil plot like Ocean's Eleven um, to trick somebody, to deceive somebody, to steal things. However, in the UK, they talk about pension schemes. And so really it just means an, a very elaborate, detailed plan for, to make something happen. But what were these North Korean bankers doing? They were money laundering. Yesterday we had to extradite. What do you think the chances are that North Korea will extradite its bankers to the United States or any other country? I'm gonna go with 0% chance, but who knows? Boris Johnson outlines reopening guidelines. Line them up, line them up. Guidelines, much like on a road, there are lines here and here, and you are supposed to stay between the lines. Those are the general rules for the way to behave, the way to conduct yourself. We had to draw up a plan, a contract, it means in a very meticulous, detail-oriented sort of way. However, if we're outlining it, it's more just like a rough sketch. It's the general ideas, nothing too specific. And I can see that there's a lot more people watching out there in Twitchlandia. Feel free, jump in the comments, ask a question, give some examples. Sometimes my synopses aren't firing quick enough to come up with great examples, or if you need me to clarify, let us know. Remember, like, as you're a kid, you're coloring in the coloring book. Those are just kind of outlines, or they're also guidelines because you're supposed to stay between the lines. As always, sad news, but moving on to the environment. Prior calculations. Ooh, prior from above. But to melt solid turns into a liquid as it warms. Yeah, everybody knows that. Or we can use it figuratively, like, oh, when I saw the little boy and his puppy playing, my heart just melted. Other things can be frozen, but then as they warm up, they don't turn into a liquid. They don't melt. For example, if you take a steak out of your freezer and you put it on the kitchen counter and wait for it to... A steak doesn't melt, or actually, if your steak melts, 
If your steak melts, you ought to think about not eating that because that's pretty disgusting. So as a solid unfreezes, what's the verb for that? Thaw, T-H-A-W, to thaw. And it's interesting, the reason it jumped into my mind as well is because yesterday or the day before, we had uh, diplomacy between US and China frozen or in a deep freeze. And so we can often use that idea of thawing, not melting, but thawing, for diplomatic relations as well. Um, we don't want them to melt down like a nuclear reactor, but as they thaw and then they're usable again, they start progressing, start working. Intent on, to be intent on doing something just means you're gonna do it no matter the cost, no matter what price you have to pay. I intend on doing this. I intend to do this. Oh, wait, I intend to do something. Ah, uh, just means you want to or plan to but to be intent on next level. If something is intimate, it implies being very close and maybe a degree of emotion and connection between the two parties. And so the intimate portraits or pictures, not paintings, of real life cyborgs. Um, does that mean my mom is a cyborg because she has two artificial hips and one artificial knee? No, I don't think that quite counts. I don't want to reveal any more intimate details about myself though. And so we're just gonna have to move on. Ah, uh, here we go. We have a giant 3D wave. The waves just keep turning up here. However, this time it's a literal wave of water, but not real water still because there's this building in Seoul, Gangnam district, and they covered it in LEDs or LCDs or basically a big TV screen and it makes a three-dimensional wave. Here they say sweeps over. And I take issue with this headline and to illustrate why I'm upset with it, we're gonna welcome back to the show one of my most common guests. I think this is his third appearance on the show, my broom, yes? And this is a broom. This is a dustpan. We use it for sweeping, yes? And if you're sweeping something, you're moving across a large area, just like Beatlemania swept the nation. The virus has swept the globe. Some good collocation, swept the nation, swept the globe. Um, fixie bikes, it was a trend, a craze, it swept the globe. Uh, man buns, where guys tie up their hair on top, that ridiculous trend, swept the globe. Um, skinny jeans has swept the globe. And so it means move across a large territory. And that's why I take issue with this because the wave is confined to the limitations of the building. It can't sweep across the district or sweep over the district. And so I would say crashes over or crashes on because the wave goes, it's peaking, it's cresting, and then crashing. But it stops like it's in an aquarium or something. So I had it yesterday as well. Boo to you, writers. It's not often. I love your creative writing, but every once in a while, I've got beef with it to have beef, disagreement. It means from a specific time and place. If you think about it, yes, it comes from wine, a specific grape from a specific region in a specific year. However, now we've extra expanded the use of this to include all sorts of things. We can have vintage clothing. Yeah, all around Bourne, there's a vintage clothing secondhand shops. Oh yeah, El Bourne, it's a neighborhood here in Barcelona. Vintage clothes, vintage jewelry, vintage styles, vintage furniture. And it doesn't mean old fashioned in the style of, it means actually from that time. Yeah. Every once in a while we have some vintage vocabulary, kind of words that have not become obsolete, but have become outdated, passe. And last but not least, reshaping the sex tech, sex tech industry. Hmm. Sorry, hold on, gotta wet the whistle here. To wet the whistle, it actually comes from, because when you're trying to whistle, sometimes it doesn't work and you have to lick your lips. But so wet the whistle means take a drink. Nice little idiom for that colorful sort of speech. To reshape something, to change the shape, because re, again, yesterday we had a prodigy revolutionizing the chess industry, chess sport, the world of chess. Um, here they're reshaping the sex tech industry. And that's just funny because um, a lot of sex tech objects, we could say, um, have particular shapes we could say. And so they're reshaping the industry by also probably reshaping the objects. Oh, writers, you saved yourself there on the last headline. That is the news for, or that was the news, 
for today, Friday, the 29th of May. Thanks for tuning in. Jump in the comments. Participate. As I always say at the end of every class, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, compliments, queries, quandaries, quagmires. Nah, now you're just pushing it too far, Mr. James. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the likes, subscribes, but especially share it if you can. Maybe it's not your thing, but I'll bet you know somebody who would love it. So pass it along. Help the world out. So that way we can all express ourselves more accurately and more interestingly. If I don't see you sooner, Monday morning, 8 a.m. Bye-bye. Yeah, stop the stream.